Hello everybody! Today I am in my pajamas and no makeup, gross hair. Um, I just am having a lazy day. I was off. I was like, I'll film a video, but I don't want to get dressed and do my hair and makeup to go nowhere, so... <clears throat> this is something I may not have mentioned in my welcome video. Um, that's actually a horrible video. I'll probably redo it sometime in the near uh, far future. Um, <laughs> But I, on top of all the subscriptions, the people I'm subscribed to, um, on top of doing a cover of every single one of their videos, I am going to do a cover of the Harry Potter unofficial cookbook. Um, it looks like this. Um, the Harry Potter cookbook. Um, yeah, to start off with, it's unofficial. So, J.K. Rowling, that just means J.K. Rowling hasn't approved it. doesn't mean that it's not as good. But, um... Essentially, the author, Diamond Bushel, Bushel um, has taken every single food, dish, snack, treat, candy ever mentioned in any of the Harry Potter books and makes recipes for them. Either finds them or makes them and tried and tested them until they were all perfect and made a book about it. That, to me, is like perfect because my love of cooking and my love of Harry Potter combine and I'm just like... <gasps> Tears. There are 150 recipes. I've done like the first chapter and a half. I've done about 22 or 23 of them. So that's still a lot, but um, eventually I'll get to the point where I haven't done them. So I've already made notes in my book um, about what I would do differently if I'd make them again. Um, but I'm going to still do it like I've done it for the first time for you guys um, and then make those notes at the end of the video. This is unofficial and so am I. I am unofficially doing this. I'm not going to give you exact, like exactly how much you need of everything. Like, I'm not going to say three cups of flour or this much. Because then I would be giving you the recipes without you having to buy the book and that's not fair. So, um, I don't want to be sued or copyrighted and I definitely believe you should go and support her. Get the book. Um, it's amazing. Great book. Definitely go get it. Um, there's no reason. There's not like, even if you don't like in general most the recipe, there's still ones that I know you like um, if you like food. So it's filled with so much more than just the recipes. It's it's just beautiful. I will tell you all about that. Um, that's why this video is going to be a little bit longer, a lot longer, because I'm not only going to do the recipe and read it and do all the things I would do with my normal videos, but I'm going to introduce the book to you. Um, not like a sales pitch, but I just want to tell you about it because I'm so excited about it. I don't work for this company, I don't know this woman, I just want you to buy it because it's awesome. To start with, there's this really beautiful forward in the book um, by, I think, the author's agent, and he just talks about how food is so important in the Harry Potter universe because Harry, you know, with the Dursleys, he was never allowed to eat a lot of anything, and he wasn't allowed special treats. Um, I think it's in the Prisoner of Asked Me in the third book, when, like, Harry and Ron and Hermione, or Ron and Hermione and Sirius send him cakes and Dursley's on a diet. It's either the third or the fourth one um, where he's on a diet and so they send him things and he has to hide it. They just limit his food and they um, they don't give him as much. He gives Dur um, Dudley's leftovers most of the time. Like in um, when they go to the zoo for Dudley's birthday, he gives his leftovers. So just kind of not, you know, food is a punishment to Harry. He gets taken away or doesn't get it. In the wizarding world, he gets a feast. He gets all the food he wants, as much as he wants, what he wants. It's, yeah, just really cool. And then he talks about we as muggles. Um, if you haven't gotten your Hogwarts letter, I'm assuming you haven't if you're watching this. I didn't either, so it's okay, I'm with you. Um, we as muggles don't get to try the wizarding food, let alone as Americans, we don't get to try. British food, so we're, we don't know what steak and kidney pies are and black pudding and crumpets. And, I mean, maybe you do, but even if you do know what they are, have you had them? Mm -hmm. I haven't. Um, so this serves to give you a little taste of English life, British life, and also wizarding life. I mean, even the English don't have fizzy, fizzy whiskeys and uh, fudge flies and acid pops, you know, but with this book, you can have that in his sense. That's really fun. And then he says that a lot of the stuff you can find at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Florida, and they just opened one in California, so you can find those there, but for those of us not rich enough, lucky enough, or like, 
just available enough to go. Um, I've never had the money to go. I would go in a heartbeat. That's like my dream. I'm going to cry about it if I talk about it for too long. But I've always wanted to go. But for those of us who can't and can't try the butter beer and all that stuff, this has all the recipes um, that you could ever want in it. And more that they won't make at the Wizard of the World Harry Potter. I want to read these two quotes. I know this is going to be long. I just, these are so good. A brave new world of gustatory delights awaits. Gustatory? Gustatory? Delights awaits. If only we Americans have the stomach to try something other than our favorite dishes of pizza, burgers, and sandwiches. For the gastronomically conservative reader who is willing to venture forth and broaden his palate with traditional British dishes, the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook will satisfy the appetite no matter how persnickety. Um, I just love that because I'm a persnickety eater. Um, I'm ridiculously picky. And now I love cooking. I love cooking a broad range of things, but like if it has tomato things or mushrooms, not eat Like, I mean, I eat like tomato products, just not actual tomatoes. Um, like banana, potato, I mean, I just have very picky. So for me, this book is, you know, it's got a, a wide range of things that I know I'm gonna have to try. I've already looked ahead and I'm like, I am not eating something with chicken blood in it, okay? And I don't even like ham or pork, so a lot of these normal ones, even, uh, I'm like, I can't do them. And then there's an introduction that just talks about how this book gives us powers because Gamp's Law of, oh, what's it called? Gamp's Law of Elemental Transfiguration? Um, her mind talks about it in the Deathly Hall, so I'm pretty sure. Um, oh, yeah, it says here in the book, Gamp's Law of Elemental Transfiguration. See, Harry Potter, Deathly Hall is chapter 15. See, how handy is that? Um, talks about how, you know, we can't create food out of nothing, but cookery combines elements of potion, transfiguration, herbology, and divination. I just think that's so fun. Um, when you think of cooking as like a potions class, uh, I've always wanted to take potions the most, not because I'm a Slytherin, I'm a Hufflepuff, but because it's just like, ah, oh, potions. Uh, also, potions is essentially following a recipe and making something out of it. Along with each recipe, there's a little historical fact. Um, it's usually historical, sometimes it's just trivia. And all these recipes are either British or Irish. Um, some are Scottish. Don't quote me on that, actually. But sometimes we don't have the best recipe or the best technique, but even if we do, it sometimes still comes out wrong. It says, don't you wish you had a half blood prince looking over your shoulder telling you I have a better way to concoct this potion. Um, so this is just a really sweet, magical book. Um, then it has a page of hints. And a quick note on this, it has, you know, be careful, substitute this, what tempering is, how to flour and grease a pan, how to measure, what is termed out of sugar, um, all that kind of stuff. It's got 15 tips. And I'm telling you now, because I'm covering this, I want you guys to see the experience. I'm going to follow them to a team. I normally tap off my measuring caps, you know, I'm like, okay, it doesn't matter that much. I'm going to measure exactly, like, you know, take the knife and scrape it, pack, you know, brown sugar. I'm going to do it exactly as the recipe states, um, just so you see that, like, oh, this really does work, or this really doesn't, um, even when she follows exactly. So I'm going to try my hardest to do exactly what the recipe says and use her hints. Um, if I ever have to substitute anything, I'm going to go to her hints for that. So then, before every chapter, there's an opening. So then chapter one is called Good Food with Bad Relatives. So this whole chapter is all the food they have at the Dursleys. There's a short paragraph that's the summary, and then there's a, another little paragraph that talks about how she needs a good cook, and she makes a fancy meal in the Chamber of Secrets for the Masons, for Vernon to seal the deal with the drills. And then, um, in the Prisoner of Azkaban for Aunt Marge, but Harry wins both those meals by blowing Marge up and by <laughs> dropping the cake. Well, it was Dobby, but sorry, I'm talking too much. But anyways, Uncle Vernon can't forgive him. says Uncle Vernon will never forgive him for losing the deal that would have bought him a summer home in Majorca. So there's a fun little opening before every chapter and um, that just explains what the chapter's going to be about. So this one's all about all the foodies and the um, It's Real quick, before I start on the recipe and the whole video part of it, I am going to dress up, um, maybe cheesy, but I love Harry Potter, so I'm going to get all my gear, um, but I decided not to for this one. One, because I'm having a lazy day. Two, because he's at the Dursley still. This is, like, chapter one, 
chapter 2 material of Harry Potter. Like, he doesn't even know he's a wizard yet. So why am I supposed to dress up like a wizard when he's having a muggle food? Right? You have me? Okay. First recipe is English fried eggs and a gammon of bacon. So, I actually don't know what a gammon is. I'm assuming it's a serving or... I'm gonna look it up. It's not a serving, it's a ham. So, and a ham of bacon. It's like smoked ham. Uh, we're gonna pretend it's a serving. So before every recipe, there's a little putting it in context when it comes in. I decided what would be really fun is if I read the context before I did all these recipes. I read you from the actual Harry Potter book by J.K. Rowling, not the cookbook. Or so starts off in chapter two of the Sorcerer's Stone, The Vanishing Glass. I'm only going to read the sentences with the um, actual food mentioned in them because that'd be boring if I just read to you a few pages from Harry Potter. Harry heard her walking toward the kitchen and then the sound of the frying pan being put on the stove. Should I, should I speak in that? We'll get a move on. I want you to look after the bacon. And don't you dare let it burn. I want everything perfect on Daddy's birthday. Uncle Vernon entered the kitchen as Harry was turning over the bacon. Harry was frying eggs by the time Dudley arrived in the kitchen with his mother. Harry put the plates of egg and bacon on the table, which was difficult as there wasn't much room. Harry, who could see a huge Dudley tantrum coming on, began wolfing down his bacon as fast as possible in case Dudley turned the table over. I know it was choppy, but <laughs> if you're watching this, you should have read the book already, so you know what it's talking about. Let's do the history tidbit. Eggs and bacon doesn't sound very posh, but some 400 years ago, it was a breakfast of Queens. Brianna Maria, Queen Consort of England, and wife of King Charles I would finish off a fancy breakfast with a simple dish of poached eggs and bacon. So she'd eat a breakfast and then like, to finish it she'd eat poached eggs and bacon? That's usually all I can eat. That's great. In England, a rasher is used to refer to a slice of bacon. So that's handy because the first thing you need is two rashers or slices of bacon. If lard or bacon drippings reserved for frying. Fun fact about that, so since I made this before, I decided, and I'm going to do this in the video too, since I don't have lard on hand and it says to do, in the actual recipe, it says to do the bacon drippings reserved for frying. That's what I'm going to use. But I took the tablespoon and I scooped it out, but it was still hot and the tablespoon was plastic. So you can imagine how that went. Melted wax, all the drippings were gone so we couldn't even cook the eggs and the drippings. But um, and then you need eggs and salt, freshly ground black pepper to taste. We use fresh pepper. We use the, the grinder that puts the pepper kernels. I don't actually know what they're called. And then we grind it up ourselves. So, um, yeah. So that is everything you're going to need. Another quick aside. Um, my notes in this at the very end. It just says break the eggs and put them in the pan. And I'm like, and. Dot, uh, dot, 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 cook is what I wrote um, because it doesn't tell you how to cook them. But then there's after after the whole recipe, there's this little paragraph at the end um, after it says servings or one. So this is for one person. She writes, fried eggs are served by a degree of doneness, sunny side up, over easy, over medium, or over hard. And then she describes how to do the four of those, and so you get to pick which one you're going to do. So I decided I wouldn't do sunny side up, that's kind of the classic American thing. I don't know if it's British, um, but I've actually never liked sunny side up. Don't hate me. I also don't want to do over hard, I don't like my egg broken um, or, or just cooked all the way. So I was between over medium and over easy, and over easy is more traditionally American. and It's what more people in general would do. Most people order over easy at a restaurant. Um, over medium is like a little bit cooked and so I just decided I'm gonna do over easy because that's what people seem to want. Um, I'm just rambling. We're gonna get right to it and start cooking and then I'll see you guys back here to rate it. It just says to lay it carefully in the pan. It says to use a pair of tongs or a fork. I'm gonna be using a fork. Um, also it didn't say to put any oil in or anything so I didn't do that. Or to spray the pan and now it's kind of sticky. So that's not good. Now we're going to turn it. Then two minutes.
set it for another two minutes. Now, you just continue to turn, oh, every 30 seconds until it's your desired crispiness. So we have black bacon. Uh, that did not work out. Um, because it's on so high, I put it on medium heat, uh, just like it specified. And it just made our, oh, okay, that's done. So then it wants you to uh, take your bacon and let it drain on paper towels. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. That was a piece of bacon. That is now not a piece of bacon. So, there are our two pieces of bacon. Hot. We're gonna let it drain on paper towels. So now I'm gonna turn the pan from medium high to medium low. So now we're gonna break the eggs into a small bowl. This is so that if you do it right into the pan, you may get um, shell in it. Oh no, one of them broke. So now we're going to add the fat back to the pan. This is just ensuring that you only got one tablespoon. You could have kept the one tablespoon in. Um, and so we're going to wait for it to sizzle. Okay. So now it is sizzling and we're going to add the eggs in. Ooh! Stinks about the broken out. We're going to season with salt and freshly ground black pepper. Now we're going to cook for three minutes. Keep them like that for two minutes. This one is going to end up being over hard because the yolk broke. Hopefully this one will turn out over easy. Um, according to the instructions, instructions it should. All right. So that was two minutes. I'm gonna take a second and break into this supposedly over easy one and see. Yeah, this would be considered over medium where it's mostly cooked with a little bit of softness. Now, I um, definitely know that the bacon is burnt um, following the exact instructions that burn the bacon. I also don't know who would ever just need two pieces, but that's just me. No. I can't. I need to eat some egg or something. Hopefully these are good. Mm, that's good. That's just your typical fried egg. Um, I don't like them like this. I don't know. I mean, you can see super well. Um, over medium. Um, I wanted them to be over easy, but the instruction called for three minutes on one side, two on the other. Even at medium low heat um, in bacon grease, that's just, that's really high. That's really quick. They cook quickly. So my camera cut out right before I finished um, reviewing and eating. I'm sure you didn't want to watch me eat anyway. But um, it wasn't that good. Um, to start off with, it took 20 minutes, probably less if you're faster than me, but I was you know, specifically doing the exact time, trying to do the exact book um, and take all the suggestions. So it took about 20 minutes, which is pretty short. Um, it would cost under, I mean, eggs and bacon cost differently, it depends on if you're buying organic or turkey bacon or vegan bacon or everything. It depends on where you live. It depends on if you're buying large or medium eggs, if you're buying them by the dozen. So I'm just going to go ahead and say with making two slices of bacon and two eggs, it's less than ten dollars. I mean, probably less than five if you're calculating only those two and not buying in a pack. You were literally just buying two pieces of bacon. Um, so super cheap. Um, but everything's kind of wrong. 
I mean, not everything. To start with, don't put your paint on medium high heat for the makeup. Put it on medium. Maybe even medium low. Um, don't do two minutes on each side. Do one minute. And then the 30 seconds. Um, this is if you're making it. For the eggs, I, I can't speak for sunny side up since I just did the over. Um, but they both came out, I would get what I would consider over hard. Um, they were both chewy on the outside, like like jello. But like jello is like almost soft still. Like harder than jello. Like, what's like jello? Like meat. Um, it was like chewing meat, the eggs, the white part. The yellow part was soft, but they were both done. So it was over hard for what was supposed to be over easy. So instead of doing three minutes on one side, do two minutes. And then instead of for over easy being two minutes, do one. Um, just take everything down by a minute or two and take the heat down um, even for both of them. It depends on the pan you're working on. Okay, time to rate it. As for easy and hard to follow, I'm going to give it a four. Um, it is really easy and hard to follow. I just don't think it's right. Um, but the egg part should be part of the recipe, not part of the side note. I guess she's letting you cook the eggs how you want. Um, it's, yeah, it's easy enough to follow. It's just not as clear as I'd like it to be. Um, at the beginning of the book with the helpful hints, she says that if you're making something and you're not sure how many, how much time or something, look at the visual cues that I've given. There are no visual cues. It's not like, oh, when the bacon starts turning. I mean, I know how to cook bacon and eggs. I knew this was going to burn because I've made it before and because I make bacon and eggs regularly. But if you're a first time cooker, chef, um, or first time, and you're like, oh, maybe this is how they make it in England, or London, Britain. I, I promise you, they don't like burnt bacon. I've never been, but I'm just, I'm sure. Um, and chewy eggs, I mean, some people do like over party eggs. I do not. I'm sure not everyone there does either. So, I would go ahead and, um, and get, yeah, just give it a four. For the outcome, I'm gonna say one, I think. Oh, I feel so bad. Um, like the eggs weren't burnt and they were over hard, which is why I'm giving them one point. Um, because they're not completely terrible, but they're not what I intended. If I intended to make over hard eggs, first of all, that says like two minutes, 30 seconds. That's probably way too much. But if I intended to make over hard eggs, I could maybe give this a two. But the bacon was burnt. It wasn't even good. The eggs, no matter what, were overdone. Even if I had done that, I was doing them the least, like that was the least done egg, um, it was the least amount of time and it still was too much. So if you're pulling this, kind of everything got messed up. So I feel like a one just because the eggs were still edible is fair. I just hate giving such a low score because I do love Harry Potter in this book, but if you're following the recipe exactly, it's a one. As for informative and creative, I'm actually going to give that a five. Um, this recipe is not necessarily creative, but she took, I mean, this is the entire idea. I think I'm going to go ahead and give her a five in every area, in every video that I do this, but the area of informative and creative, because she gives you a history tip, she makes a reference to the book, and she just like, she, they put the serving amount, it's just a good cookbook in general. Um, I'm judging this recipe as a whole, like it didn't turn out, but the information and creativity side of it, I mean creativity went into it, not eggs and bacon on creative, but her taking just a mention of eggs and bacon on Dudley's birthday and making it a recipe, is that's just fun. Um, and, inform and as far as information, she always has information, so that's always going to be fine. For overall video, it's going to be overall recipe. Overall, I'm going to say three. Um, I think this is well presented. I like the layout. I mean, everything's good here. I can't, you know, I, I'm judging a recipe, not a video, so it's a little bit more difficult. I can't judge, like, quality. Well, I can. But the quality's good. The information is just, it didn't end up working out. So that's where the two points are taken off. 
because um, in general this is good. This is a good recipe if you just change the times and, and heat a little bit. For all the scores, 13 out of 20. I know, I'm sorry. That is a 65%, which would be a D. Um, not a D minus, so that's good. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. I would love to see you guys make this and then tell me how it turned out with my new suggestions. Um, and yeah, you should definitely go and pick this up. I would love to see everyone own this book. Every Harry Potter fan should own this book. It is a gift. Um, this recipe didn't go well, but it was because tiny things were off. I mean, in real life, I would have made it like that. And it would have been fine, but I'm so distracted. I'm just gonna end the video. It's been too long already. Thank you guys so much. Bye, have a great day. Have a good week. I will, oh, I'll see you next week in a hair video.